Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. How are you all? Are you well? Have you done anything exciting over the last few days? Remember, please keep those messages and tweets coming my way. Because as I sit here in a room every day talking into a microphone all on my own, I like nothing better than getting to see the world through your eyes, the eyes of my listeners and what you can see when listening to the show. So keep those messages coming in. Now on today's podcast, I wanted to tackle the world of legal tech. Now, in my former life in IT, I've heard some pretty terrifying stories of lawyers throwing tantrums if their tech isn't working, and they don't have the greatest reputation for embracing the next must-have tech or technological change. But legal tech is now transforming the entire legal industry all over the globe, and it's making it much easier for lawyers to get the info that they want at speeds that they could only have imagined a few years ago. So today, I wanted to speak with the guys at Bodala, which is an AI-powered legal tech platform that takes mass quantities of data, analyzes them, and provides actionable, easy-to-use insights. Now, Bodala was co-founded by Raj Goyal, and essentially, the insights it creates empowers in-house legal departments to accurately forecast legal spends and evaluate the potential outside representation for significant matters. And he has an incredible story too, with a political career where he was the Democratic politician from Kansas and represented the 87th District of Kansas House of Representatives from 2007 to 2011. But enough of me rambling on. Buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to New York City where we can speak with Raj Goyle from Bodala. So, a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Neil. We're really excited to uh, be here. It's Raj Hoyle, the founder and CEO of Bodala. And one of the, I think your listeners will be interested to know that, you know, our company and what we're doing is, you know, we're solving one of the global economy's biggest problems that most people overlook and probably uh, misunderstand. And that's the half a trillion dollar global legal industry. Um, and so what we do is we, um, you know, Forbes said we've invented the field of legal data science, which is true. And we are uh, the leading AI data analytics company in this huge market that's making sense of legal bills in the legal market. And it's working and there is a lot of change coming very quickly. There really is. I mean, it's my understanding that Bodala is an AI powered legal tech platform that takes those massive quantities of data, analyzes them and then provides actionable, easy to use insights. But can you expand on that and tell me, tell the listeners a little more about what Bodala is and also what problems that you set out to solve in the legal industry? Yeah, sure, Neil. I think most people would recognize the fact that, uh, and particularly over here in the States, man, my legal bill is always high, and I don't really understand it. And so that I think anybody could really relate to, and there would be to any lay person this sense of, boy, that's just a market and a service that is, uh, is got a lot, of pain, a lot of friction around it. So what we set out to do is we thought that even though it's this decades old industry that's super not innovative, we thought can the new technologies of AI, machine learning, big data, cloud computing and so on, could they actually move the needle? And I'm proud to say we've been able to do that. And the way we've done that is we've created the largest data source ever created in the legal industry. And so, and we use that data source and our platform and our software to provide insights for our clients that they can't get right now. So, for example, a you know large private equity company a firm saved over a million dollars on choice of IPO counsel uh, in in a way that had never been done before and had never really been thought of. Um, you just using basic principles of data and competition and transparency. Um, another you know Fortune 500 REIT. You put a billion dollar legal matter and used our process and platform to source counsel to understand the pricing um, and use that data to again save you know uh, in that case well over a million dollars. So we are really um, using the software and data to make sure that this market finally functions like a business. And I think that's really the ultimate point here, Neil, which is. Lawyers have sort of done their own thing for decades, 
And now the business world is saying, hey, look, law uh, lawyer folks, you got to act like business folks like the rest of us. I'm really fascinated by how technology is transforming multiple industries at the moment, but equally how tech leaders and their tech stories are often quite unique. For example, Jeff Bezos was not from a retail background and he went on to create Amazon. Elon Musk has had no automotive experience and he came good with Tesla. And then we have Steve Jobs, who'd never had anything to do with the mobile phone industry. But equally, you were not primarily in legal tech or legal innovation. So can you tell me a little bit more about your background and your story behind Bodala? Sure, Neil. Well, first of all, uh, I, uh, my wife appreciates the comparison to Bezos, Jobs, and Mark. <laughs> that, uh, you made my day. Uh, but, uh, but I would say this. Uh, thank God I wasn't in legal tech or called innovation, because if I had been, um, I would have been an unre- unrelenting failure, because... This is an industry that is probably the least innovative of uh, certainly any services industry in the entire world. Uh, in fact, since, you know, for your for your UK listeners, um, you know, the, the joke in the law that the last innovation was the Magna Carta. And so, you know, the, the, the notion that there really has been really much innovation at all, I think, um, I, I think, it, it, you know, most people would recognize that this is an industry that it prides itself on being hidebound. So for me personally, you know, for um, for your listeners, you know, I had an interesting background. I was the first Indian American elected in the state of Kansas. Uh, I I do have a law degree. I practice civil rights law, but then I ended up with a pretty serious political career, uh, and I I was elected as a as a progressive Democrat in one of the reddest parts of America. And then I actually uh, helped run a family office for a few years before we started Bodala. And so, as you suggest, some people might say, well, you know, where's the where's the throughput there? But I actually see it as a very continued storyline, because when I was in politics and in public policy, my passion was really to solve problems. You know, where there were market failures, when we were trying to expand health care, expand education, do, you know, provide better government services. In this case, you have a massive market failure that the private sector has allowed to, to continue for decades. So uh, the tools are different, but the passion is the same. Now, legal is a $500 billion global industry with $100 billion in overspend, and it's now running much more like a business with less volatile budgeting, value-based pricing, and increased accountability. But it is an industry ripe for disruption, and I know enough about IT and legal to know lawyers are not the most patient or fans of technology either. And the entire industry is, like you hinted at a few moments ago, infamously slow to change. So how difficult was it to get buy-in from those that are often resistant to change, resistant to new technology and those new ways of working? Absolutely been difficult. Uh, Lawyers are infamously anti-innovation, and yes, they are difficult. Uh, (laughs) But at the same, and and I say that as someone with a law degree and married to a wonderful, beautiful uh, partner at uh, at a major law firm. And, uh, you know, my wife, Monica Rora Proskauer, um, is, uh, you know, is, is quite successful. The firm's quite successful, but uh, certainly, I, I, you know, I don't think anybody would argue with the notion that lawyers don't rush to think about things in new ways. Um, and so the only thing I would say is that uh, it's even, I think, a better, a, big, uh, a great testament to our to our initial success and our and our future success that we've been able to get a significant early adoption and that we only see blue sky uh, ahead of us. And you know, the one thing I'll say is a quote we always love to use is that in 2008, Neil, the CEO of Blockbuster Video has a quote that says Netflix was not on his radar screen. Uh, you know, in 2012, I believe, in the New York Times, no, I think actually later than that, 13 or 14, the, the taxi medallion owners of New York City said they were not worried about Uber. So, you know, the only thing we know, the only thing that's permanent in business is there are no permanent business models. So there is a moment of disruption that is absolutely upon us. To the extent of it is still unknown, but there is a trade group of legal operations professionals that has grown like wildfire in just a couple of years. The C-suite, the board is no longer just letting the lawyers do their thing unchecked. And now you have the CFOs, the chief procurement officers telling the legal departments, yes, you need to handle the legal risk, but you have to justify your dollars. And that change is coming fast. And there's another another one. I'm going to, example I'll give you there was Steve Ballmer at Microsoft who made the infamous uh, 
joke about the iPhone when it first came out. So there's no keyboard on it. This is never going to work. And just mocked <laughs> Steve Jobs for bringing that out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I read that every year there was a 16 to $18 billion in contestable business among the top 25 most profitable firms in the legal industry, as that clients are willing to unbundle work away from historical relationships to leaner firms, whether they be big or boutique. I mean, can you expand on that? Yeah, thanks. Neil. It, it, that's a great study, and I think it's something that is catching more recognition, but is still not well understood in the profession, which is, if you think about it, most people assume that who gets hired by a big company or even a small company is sort of a clubby relationship thing. And largely it is. But, you know, five years ago, 85 percent of the procurement decision. And again, lawyers don't even like that that word. But that's what it is. You're hiring a lawyer. Uh, And it kind of reminds me that one of my friends said that uh, hiring a lawyer is a no bid contract to your good friend who overbills you. And so, um, (laughs) you know, that is the reality of where we are. But so five years ago, 85 percent of that work was sort of let's say, stuck and not movable. Well, now it's about 50%. And then in, in, in five years, we predict only 15% will, will sort of be uh, have lock-in. So right now, there is, as you suggest, almost $20 billion in legal spend. And that we're talking the most elite companies, the most elite law firms, where that, that work is not necessarily going to move, but it can move. So the fact that the general counsel or the legal department just says, hey, we're using this top firm and that's the way it is, that dog doesn't hunt anymore. They now have to say to the CFO and to the C-suite, hey, we're justifying that it is worth spending this money with them. So that's the really fascinating change that's hitting the industry. We have law departments ask us every day, can you find us very high quality firms that are a better value for the dollar? And there are many firms out there. So there is a lot of change happening. Can you also tell me a little bit more about how Bodala's insights empower in-house legal departments so they can actually accurately forecast how much one should spend on a matter? Sure. So let's take one example. Let's take you know mid-market M&A work at a, at a big you know, Fortune 50 company. Well, what Bodala can do is right now they would say, well, you know, really by gut instinct, they would say, yeah, we're spending with the right firms and we actually know all the good firms out there. But when you look at it and you use, say, the Bodala platform, what you find out actually is that when you use the analytics to look at their spend in the past, it can easily at a click of a button point out the inefficiencies and the efficiencies in the spend. So suddenly you're able to say, oh, whoa. We're paying well over market rate for those services, my gosh. And then the platform can also say, and there are so many other providers out there who are amazing and excellent, and you're not even giving them a chance to compete for your work. And, you know, it's Adam Smith 101. When there's a huge supply pool, let competition happen, and therefore you'll get a better price and a better better service. So that's actually then how they can look at that, understand where their spend has been in the past, look at the dynamic supply pool of providers, and then they can accurately forecast and say, well, we actually should be spending X number of dollars on that practice area to make sure that it's still consistent with our culture, our values, and of course, to make sure that the legal risk is always um, as minimal as it should be. Now, Mark Cuban famously said that data is the new gold. So I've got to ask, I mean, are you noticing a drive to more data-driven legal departments now? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Mark Cuban is a, is a smart guy and the data revolution in the law is on. And I can tell you it is now, um, you know, it's sort of I think it's it's clearly a buzzword, um, Neil, but it's actually much more than that. Yeah. It is yeah. truly changing how the even the practicing law firm partner, the in-house lawyer, the, the general counsel thinks about his or her work. And so, um, you know, we say that the data revolution is now becoming in the DNA of the legal profession. And, and I'll tell you a quick story, which is I was on a I was at a at a panel on, at a conference and there were four of the top chairs. Uh, there were four chairs, one of the top four top law firms in, in the world. Uh, and, and they said, what is your interest in data mining on a scale of one to 10? And they all said, and 11. 
And they said, what were your tools to actually do the data mining right now? And they said a one or a two. <laughs> so the law firms know that they must understand data to communicate their value to their clients, to understand their own businesses, their profitability. Certainly law departments and companies understand that data is the way to take this famously high bound profession and make it efficient and optimized. Can you also tell me about how AI tech that makes Bo Dalla stand out in that legal tech arena too? Absolutely. You know, just to step back for a second, the technology stack in the legal industry has unfortunately is um, is unfortunately very weak, and it has largely been, uh, in fact, overwhelmingly a consultant-driven industry, and so um, there has been very little pure technology. So we're really excited about the fact that we are really supercharging this industry because there is certainly uh, no AI and machine learning that's going on really in the industry that's been meaningful. And so what we do is we, we built an enormous data set on our own. And then of course we have uh, you know tremendous amounts of client data as well. So we're able to not only unlock insights from our client's own data, we can enrich their data with, with our own data set and really give them you know massive new insights that they weren't able to, to reach before. So what's next for Bodalo? Is there anything else that you can share with us today? Sure. Well, we, we see nothing but growth and, and excitement ahead. I mean, I, I would say the data revolution in the law is probably in the for the baseball fans out there, probably the top of the second inning. And we don't really know, uh, you know, how long this game will go. But, uh, you know, there's there there's many, many more years of head. So for Bodala, we see exponential growth in our business. You know, we're now well into the seven figures of revenue with some of the leading clients in the world that we're extremely honored and privileged to work for and work with. Uh, so we really do think that uh, observers of the global economy, your listeners should, um, you know, it's probably legal isn't sometimes the thing that's uh, top of mind or tip of the tongue, but it's a really exciting space. And there's a lot of important, uh, there's not only a large, huge, mass amount of dollars that are spent in this industry, there's a lot of uh, the economy that's affected, a lot of lives that are affected, and we need change to come to this very important profession. Now, like I said at the beginning of the show, lawyers are not the most patient of uh, or fans of technology either. The entire industry is infamously slow to change. So the fact that you've built an AI-powered legal tech platform that takes mass quantity of data, analyzes it, and provides actionable, easy-to-use insights and make it a success is a phenomenal achievement on its own. And I'm going to go uh, here again. You can tell your wife this. I think that makes you worthy of being compared with Bezos, Musk and Jobs. So you can tell her, tell her I said that. But more than anything, a big thank you for <laughs> coming on today. Very, very kind. I love how Bodala allows law firms of all sizes to compete for available business on the merits of performance, not relationships. And it helps them effectively plan for the new world of value-based pricing. And like I said at the beginning of the show, the legal industry has always been extremely slow to change. It's got quite a reputation, especially when it comes to adopting new technology. But they're realising the power behind that abundance of unstructured data that's available. And Bodala is the only platform that can take that mass quantity of data, analyse it and provide that actionable, easy to use insights. I think we often forget that legal is a $500 billion global industry with $100 billion in overspend. I mean, just try and consider that for a moment. And it's now running much like a business with less volatile budgeting, value-based pricing and increased accountability. Big changes are coming. I don't know if lawyers still shout at their IT guys, but hey, we've all been hit by frustration when tech works against us rather than for us. So do you work in the legal industry? Are you noticing a real thirst for change? And is legal tech really being embraced? As always, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. Email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or, of course, pop over to my website, techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcast, and you'll find a nice little link where you can send me a voice message to. Now, I stood before you all today to tell you the benefits of an AI-powered legal tech platform. You began with doubts or maybe cynicism. But I'm sure you will all agree that Raj has taught us that the power of technology and how it is bringing people together and he's actually making a difference in law. And it is on those words, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that I say to you, I rest my case. Man, I've always wanted to tick that frustrating lawyer scene off my bucket list and I think that's the closest I'm going to get. Seriously though, a big thank you to everyone that's tuned in and listened to the show today. And until next time, Don't be a stranger. 
Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.